Hi everyone, welcome to week four. Okay, so what have you been experiencing so far? Well, hopefully some of you are still chipping away and notice the gains of what's happening from eating on a regular basis. Hopefully you're starting to find the, the pattern that works well for you. Hope, hopefully you're starting to find that the increased amount of carbohydrate and easily digested fruit is key for you. Um, we should see many things starting to improve with this, but if you haven't started to notice the changes that you get from flipping your food around, uh, fret not because there can be some other mechanisms, that, some very complex mechanisms that can be at work and part of that might come from the environment, part of that come from, might come from your own uh, biochemistry and endocrinology and the hormones that you produce. Um, so what are the things that can be uh, affecting this? Well in, in this week within the lessons we certainly look at why people experience pain in these conditions and when our thyroid isn't working effectively we tend to um, not be able to relax because we don't have enough uh, energy available. Typically a, a test for hypothyroidism is the Achilles return reflex. Imagine this is my calf. The idea is that when you hit the um, Achilles tendon, the foot should um, basically contract and then relax. But in some cases, when it returns, what happens, it moves back very slowly like a, a pneumatic closing device. And that's one of the symptoms of, of hypothyroidism. And this is why people get muscle aches and pains. Have a read of that and that might make sense for you. One of the other reasons why people might not be getting as, as many gains as they were like is because of the roles of estrogen. Um, and this is happening in, in both males and females. Typical females, when you, you see symptoms of PMS and you see symptoms of uh, irritability, swelling, edema, um, you know, lack of sleep, lack of energy, all of these issues can be uh, a reason why we get kind of hormonal dysregulation. Estrogen is typically uh, cited as being a female hormone, but it's essential for tissue growth. So we see it in both males and females. The problem is, is that when estrogen becomes dominant, is that we tend to, to produce a, a less progesterone. Also, estrogen tends to inactivate thyroid hormone as well. So it's really important to consider this. Um, what estrogen also does in males is sometimes that uh, testosterone can be converted by the um, by aromatase, and here we see testosterone converted into uh, estrogen. This is really important to consider as well because it's not just uh, uh, internal sources or what we call endogenous sources of estrogen that can be a problem, but certainly environmental stimulus, uh, the soot in the air from traffic fumes, from uh, combustible engine fuel, that tends to act, act like estrogen. A lot of cleaning chemicals tend to act like estrogen. And you can look at certain websites where they show you which perfumes, when you breathe them in, tend to act like estrogen. And this is particularly worrying for a lot of females who tend to spray lots of chemicals on their neck and perfumes because that not only are you breathing it in, there's a possibility that the estrogenic uh, like factors may do have something to do with the thyroid, although that's pretty, it's unclear at the moment and it hasn't been proven. Um, so it's really important to understand what an excess of estrogen does and why there are environmental considerations of the foods that we eat um, and the environment that we're in. What we want to try and make you here is become more robust to this. Um, what you should be noticing with your food, for example, is that hopefully that some of the changes you are getting with the food, but if the temperature is not changing after you're having a good, uh, good healthy meal with plenty of energy, then some of these issues might be some of the trickier points that you need to work through. And this is going to give you some of the information that you need to look at. Typically, estrogens won't always show up in a blood test, but what you can actually get done is a, a prolactin test. And typically when prolactin is high, and bear in mind there are certain levels where prolactin is, is suggested as being high within a normal labs, I would disagree with those particular labs. And certainly these are questions that you can post on the forum as well. But a high levels of prolactin can be as associated with an excess of estrogen that you might not necessarily see in the blood, but they certainly might be present in, uh, in the cells. So understanding the role of estrogen and progesterone and estrogen's role on and decreasing testosterone is very important for both males and females. Estrogen can be responsible for many things from pre-diabetic states because we lose the ability to utilize carbohydrate. Some of the symptoms of PMS come from estrogen being high in the follicular phase and in the uh, luteal phase, but those typical symptoms of uh, craving carbohydrates may be coming because, uh, one, you're producing too much estrogen and it's uh, 
is creating a low blood sugar state and that will make you crave carbohydrates. If you're producing plenty of progesterone because it stimulates oxidative metabolism and the ability to use carbohydrate in a good functioning system, if you have low blood sugar states, you will crave more carbohydrate and that's quite normal. But it's very rare that uh, many people have that and estrogen tends to be the reason of why you're craving carbohydrates because it's pushing you into a low blood sugar state. So do have a look at this article. It's very, very important about understanding this. It's also important to understand the role of estrogens in the environment. Um, many things that can, can contribute to this. A lot of foods tend to be estrogenic. A lot of foods tend to inactivate thyroid. A lot of foods um, like vegetable oils act in a very similar manner to estrogen. Um, certainly foods like soy and other, other foods are shown to decrease um, thyroid function because they're phytoestrogens. High levels of estrogens are not something that we want. Estrogen is not bad, but when estrogen is in excess, like many other things, it can be bad. Its primary role is of tissue proliferation. So within a female during the, uh, the premenstrual phase and moving into the follicular phase, you have high levels of estrogen because it starts to thicken up the uterus. And if there's not enough progesterone, we start to see a lot of the symptoms of PMS come out. So understanding how we can manage our estrogens, how to improve our progesterone. For some of you, you may need, actually need to think about going onto a progesterone supplement. I've often seen many females respond really, really well by having uh, added progesterone within within the, a supplement or a, a dietary schedule, because it helps to counter effect, effect the the, effect, uh, the excess effects of estrogen. One of the other things that might happen is progesterone might not work as well as it could do, and this is because there's so much estrogen, it's also deactivating thyroid. And as we start to work through the program, we'll understand why things aren't working as well as they could do on an even uh, more complex level. But understand that estrogen can but deactivate or suppress both progesterone and thyroid is key. Um, so have a read of this. So look at the things that you can do to reduce your estrogen exposure. Uh, keeping your energy high, keeping uh, carbohydrates and sugars in the diet is, is essential for um, detoxing estrogen. Um, again, if there are any questions, you can post these on the Facebook forum. There will probably be plenty coming out. For guys, it might be that you might need a, a pregnenolone supplement to help uh, improve testosterone um, and certainly the other hormones. Remember, pregnenolone is a precursor hormone that will basically uh, be broken down provided there's essential amounts of vitamin A, cholesterol, vitamin B6, and the thyroid's working co correctly. And this will break down and, uh, or be um, synthesized into the other hormones like progesterone, DHEA, testosterone. So have a read through these. Uh, this is another uh, area to look at. If you're not getting the results that you want typically from the food, you're still getting in the sun, your sleep's improved, but you're noticing that your temperatures start, still aren't improving and perhaps your pulse rate's still staying a little bit on the suppressed side. So have a read of these, post any questions to the forum, and I look forward to catching up with you in week five.